let's pick some apples. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, pick tree number two. Okay, from the uh, second smaller tree, I filled about a five gallon bucket. There's probably a few more I may grab. Uh, the first tree, I probably got maybe three times as much as my guess. There's still some apples I could get. Uh, that first tree is like unprunable. These trees have been here on our farm for at least 25 years because we've been here for 10 years. The lady before has been here for uh, 10 or 12 years and I and I know she did not plant the uh, apple trees it was the people before her that planted these so I know these apples are about 25 years old maybe even 30 years old these trees I don't know the variety but I'm pretty sure they're gonna be good cider apples I've never made cider before uh, so I'm excited to try it out in the past I've made applesauce and apple butter um, why I think these are going to be good cider apples because they're not the best tasting apples. I don't think they were planted to just be apples you eat off the tree. They taste okay, they don't taste great. And they're also not the prettiest of apples. Sometimes uh, the ugliest apples make the best uh, ciders, what I've read. Uh, so I'm really excited. I have one more tree that's not doing great again these are older trees especially dwarf trees don't really live super long unfortunately uh, I got one more tree I'm going to harvest off camera and then I'm going to talk about what I'm doing to prep and hopefully figure out what kind of apples I have so I went ahead and harvested some apples from my last tree I'm going to show you what I got I may harvest a few more higher ones that are a little harder to reach i just use my step stool so i got a ladder i could use but we'll see if we get to that um in the background you actually see part of this old cider press hopefully that's part of the old cider press i'm going into the barn here hopefully it won't be too dark here's uh most of the rest of the old cider press uh i got that at an antique store last year haven't used it because i didn't have a good apple season last year here are my apples where I'm making apple cider for the first time. So let's talk about some common cider making mistakes pre-pressing, okay? Pre-pressing. Um, again, I'm not a cider expert. My first real time making cider. Uh, I mean, I've helped at a farmer too but making it on my own a little bit different uh first and foremost which maybe i mentioned it you want to get good cider apples if you can i think i have good cider apples because most cider that you get at a grocery store is not made from good cider apples those apparently are just your main eating apples that um were blemished or they didn't look 
you know, appetizing. Uh, they weren't that typical apple shape. So uh, um, a lot of those apples are used for cider so that they don't go to waste and that these orchards still make money. But unfortunately, they're not good cider apples. Um, if an apple tastes really good when you take a bite into it, it's probably not a good cider apple, okay? You can use those and blend them in. That's the next thing. If you can... You want to work on your blend for your apple cider mix. Now, again, if you're like me, you got apple trees, you're going to use them. That's what I'm doing. Um, now, as far as the blend, I'm not working on the blend this year. Um, well, I may a little bit because I can separate my apples because I know I have at least two varieties. I have this red kind of medium-sized apple that's uh, uh, it's kind of russeted on the outside. And then I have these two other trees that I think may be the same apple variety and those are much smaller green apples um so I could separate it okay so another common mistake people make uh, let me show you um well I got a lot of apples on the ground yesterday because when I was picking them I'm trying to find a good one for you Well, it looks like uh, our animals have eaten most of the apples that I put on the ground, which is, is okay. But a common mistake that happens is that you want to make as much cider as you can, so you use all of your apples. But even if um, an apple that you're picking seems to have a small blemish or especially a wormhole in it, you don't want to use it, people. If you've ever heard of the old uh, phase, uh, a bad apple or uh, one bad apple can ruin the whole batch, right? That's what it is, okay? Um, that's where that saying comes from. You don't want to use apples that look like they're rotting a little bit or apples you find on the ground because as soon as they hit the ground, they can be exposed to a lot more bacteria. They can start that rotting process. So you don't want to work so hard on your cider and use bad apples, people. You don't want to do it. And luckily for me, we have goats and pigs and horses, even our turkeys and chickens enjoy these apples. So even a few bad apples on our farm aren't really bad apples because they're gonna be used as animal feed. Um, a few other things, if you're new to cider, you don't want to store your apples in aluminum. Um, and especially when we get to the pressing, which will be in a few days. If you get to the pressing, here's one of our goats. Hey buddy, kudzu. Here's kudzu the goat. So if you get, uh, or if you store your apples in, uh, hey, don't eat my beard, buddy. If you store your apples in aluminum, they can start to oxidize, especially apple juice. You don't wanna store in aluminum because it's gonna oxidize and you'll get this weird metallic flavor, you basically wasted your apples, okay? Uh, the final thing I'm doing before I press, and uh, I think it's gonna be very helpful, it's called sweating the apples. You don't wanna pick your apples and press the same day. What you wanna do is you wanna put them in a bin. I'm using a plastic bin uh, with a lid on it, but the lid's open a little bit. Um, to sweat the apples. And there's actually water coming out. Uh, it's, it's pretty humid in that box, okay? Uh, but what's happening is that those apples are getting a little bit mushy and softer, and that apparently is going to make releasing the juices a lot easier because that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get the juice, right? Uh, the juice and the pulp. But if you um, don't let your apples rest, for a day or two. I'm probably resting mine four or five days. Some people may do it for a week, even several weeks. I just don't have the storage capacity and the setup and the time to do that. I know I should get some time this weekend and that's when I'm gonna make my apple cider. So uh, I hope this has been a helpful video for you. Uh, first time making cider, I'm pretty excited. Stay tuned. In a video or two after this one, um, I'm going to show you my old cider press, and then we're also going to uh, make apple cider, people.
So I can't wait.